Shalom brothers and sisters. So sure, it, it's been a rough week as far as ministry goes and um, <laughs> the Watchman community. What I'm finding more and more, sadly and unfortunately, is that Watchmen are attacking Watchmen and the communities at war with itself on small issues of disagreements. One person sees it this way, another pe person sees it that way, and now they're publicly attacking each other. Um, it's sad because they're not seeing the devil working through them to tear down a community that's on the edge of our seats waiting on the rapture and that blessed hope that the Lord has right ahead of us. We are virtually on exit, standing on G, ready on O to get out of here. And now suddenly love is leaving the building amongst us as well. I mean, it's crazy. Just need to get back to the word of God and the core principles of what we're all standing for and focus. You know, a little bit of mercy between each other, a little bit of love between each other. And to be aware of what we're teaching. Because you know what I've always felt in my ministry all these years? There's a heavier responsibility. The minute I teach something from the Word of God, the minute I say, this is what is going on here, I have the responsibility of standing in front of Jesus Christ one of these days, much sooner than later, because we're so close to the rapture and the edge of eternity. And I will have to explain if I have led anyone in error. If I have said anything that does not align with the incorruptible, perfect word of God, that I haven't been careful with my words and my teachings, that I haven't been in line with Jesus Christ all along and the Holy Spirit's guidance. And people are throwing that aside. They're, they're treating, and, and it comes back to this core problem. People are more and more in ministry and in Christian communities treating Jesus like one of the boys. He's just one of the family members. That righteous fear of God that we should have in who he is, really, is gone. There's no respect. And I don't mean fear as in be scared of him and go hide in a corner. He's terrible. I mean fear, respect, understanding who you're dealing with. This is he who breathed creation into existence. You want to treat him with disrespect and, and act all shoddy around him like he's nobody. What the heck? You've got to be careful. You're treading where angels fear to tread. Have some respect along with your love for Jesus Christ, for God. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I can tell you stories about the earth cracking open and swallowing tribes because they transgressed. I'm just saying, remember, it's not always a lamb. Sometimes it's a lion. And people need to get that back in place. And then they might be more careful with their words, with their teaching, with the way they approach the flock of God that Jesus feels very strongly about. Feed my sheep, as in feed them correctly, and know that I will require their blood from your hands. Know that I will require anything that you've done in error from you. And we'll have a discussion. This is not a fun discussion that you want to have. You want to hear from Jesus' lips. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You're done. You've reached the end of the race. This is it. That's all you want to hear. And then you want to throw your crown at his feet. You don't want to hear, what do you think you were doing teaching this? Or why were you trying to make more money? Or why were you after this angle? Or why were you leading in error? Why were you trying to be popular by accepting evil into the house of God? These are not conversations you want to have with the Creator of everything so so that's what i'm not understanding i'm seeing just again in the last week youtube channels with over sixty thousand followers so bigger channels teaching that jesus only ministered for one year he was born in he died in 24 a.d and then next year 2024 will be 2000 years later I, I don't know where these people get their bible knowledge at all because they don't know how to pass and work with the word of god and history and everything that goes along with it they haven't done any of the homework or legwork so the tribulation starts next year it runs for one year and then it's going to be over the end the, they teach things like this and they have massive channels where are you getting this 
There's so much proof that you are wrong in absolutely every way. And then you're giving this to your people. What the heck? People, you've got to be careful. You've got to take what everyone says. And that includes me. With the word of God. And go back and check. And if you have a question, you come right back and you ask that question. And if they can't answer you or they're ignoring you, that's already a, a warning sign for me. Um, others are sitting and spending time just teaching apocryphal works. There's enough time to spend in the Word of God. I've touched on this. Spend your time in the actual 66 books by divine revelation given to you for a time such as this. Then there's another one that apparently told this, this blessed sister in Christ, shame. If you don't believe that Barack Obama is the Antichrist, it proves you don't have discernment and therefore you will not go in the rapture. What Bible are you reading? We're not told to look for the Antichrist. Yes, you can have ideas and guesses. I've even released a video with my guesses on a bunch of candidates. But that's it. They were just guesses. And I'm completely wrong probably. And at the end of that video, I tell you too, it's probably going to be someone completely unknown. Stepping onto the scene once the restrainer is removed. Who gives you the right to say that by not agreeing that it is Barack? Who it might be? Who knows? That you have no discernment, you're not going in the rapture. Who made you God? And these are massive channels. Massive channels. How are you so, you know, aggressive and attacking the body of Christ like that? It, it's sad to see this. It really is. Um, and then calling each other, calling another watchman, a false teacher, due to... A disagreement in an interpretation of a feast of the Lord. And and at the end of the day, and I've listened to it, it's just because he was not listening carefully to what was being said in the first place. And then publicly attack this poor watchman and call him a false prophet. That was horrifying. What about Matthew 18, verse 15 to 17? If you have a problem with your brother, go to him, you and him, and speak to each other and resolve it. And if that doesn't resolve, go with some more people and then go to the church and then only <clears throat> write them off. What about following biblical principles instead of just being aggressive and trying to tear down the body of Christ? Is it a salvation issue that you two disagree on a feast? No. So what the heck? Where's the fruits of the Spirit? Where's the love? Like I say, it's it's been a sad sad week for me watching what's going on and and how much headway the enemy is making within the body of christ and those that are awake and watching for the return of the lord so be careful of that pray for them because even watchmen as we've now clearly seen can fail and fall and become prideful and make mistakes and we pray that their eyes go open that they gain some humility and love and that they make up with each other. And that everything is improved. That the enemy does not gain ground in these areas. So again, please pray for the Watchman community. Um, some blessed brothers that are hurting. Others that need a wake up call. And at the end of the day, all of you, the church following. That are either getting confused or hurt or disrupted in the process. We pray that the Lord gives his peace that surpasses all understanding to all and that everything comes out the right way. Then if we look at world news where we're at at the moment, uh, the World Health Organization just warned something worse than COVID's coming. Yes, we know, we know. We've been expecting this for a while. We have tinfoil hats. We have badges for being banned on Facebook and all these places for speaking the truth. Yes, got it. So I'm not even worried. Don't be scared. Don't be stressed. It's just the next phase of their plan. We probably won't be here for that. So good luck to them. For those who are catering fear to those who are buying fear, great. Fear is not of God. So we will not buy into it. Uh, everyone, everyone. I mean, Google CEOs, everyone. Warning that AI is a threat to humanity and will be our destruction and our end. The Chinese military just simulated destroying a U.S. carrier fleet. No one's stressed about that. No one's saying anything about that. It's just happening. 
So why would they be practicing that and simulating that and spending money on that? Because duh, they are preparing to do just that. They are preparing for a war that they've already committed themselves to. People just don't want to believe that it's even possible. Never mind all the Chinese nationals that have crossed your borders already and are setting up to be boots on the ground on the inside when this whole thing goes down. Uh, the percentage of people asking Google if they are gay has soared 1,300% in 19 years. And this is because of the chaos and confusion being spread through the media, which is controlled by the beast system. They are sowing confusion and chaos all the time. And they are just causing this illusion of chaos to be ripe in people's hearts and lives. And if they don't have Jesus as the light, now they're confused. Absolutely. Uh, Chinese hackers have hacked U.S. infrastructure now. They're actively busy with that at the moment. That sounds like something you do before you go to war. You practice taking it down to cause as much confusion within the country so that launches can't take place on time. People can't communicate with each other on time. Orders can't get given. That's happening now. Preparation for that too. Just so absolute confusion. 19 kids dead after girl burns down dorm because her phone was confiscated. The love of many will grow cold. Lawlessness will abound. And these are all things right at the very end. We're seeing these as everyday stories. This is normal. People are not batting an eyelid. And these things are happening all around them. Pray that more believers' eyes go open to realize how late the hour is, how soon the return of Jesus Christ is, and how close everything is to wrapping up. And stay strong, no matter how hard the difficulties or what's been thrown at you by the enemy, because he is raging, because he knows his time is short. Short as in seven years or less, not one year like that other guy. I mean, come on, it's not a... Daniel's one day. It's Daniel's week. 70th week, not 70th day. He knows his time is short and the Lord's going to cut it short to save all flesh. Because otherwise all flesh would be lost in the end. Support each other. Pray for each other. Walk in love. And hold on to that blessed hope. God bless have an amazing day. Shalom.